What's up everybody, my name is David, but my friends call me Harry and welcome back to another Lightroom tutorial. There's no better way than to speed up your process of becoming a full-time hipster than being able to edit your photos to look like film. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I edit photos to give them that kind of vintage film look without the need for magical presets that cost 343,402 dollars in rand for South Africans. I've got my photo up here in Lightroom. This is the completely unedited, straight out of camera version of the photo. And this is the edited version with nice sort of film vintage look to it. It's just kind of my particular style, it's just what I try and achieve when I shoot particularly portrait kind of stuff. This photo was edited using the Visco Film 400H++ preset in the Visco Film Essentials Pack. There are quite a lot of misconceptions about presets. A lot of people think that applying a preset is going to change the entire look of a photo and make it 10 times better than what the photo was and just somehow makes this crappy photo look magical. And it's just not true. You've really got to understand how a preset can complement a photo and then what adjustments to make once you've applied the presets. The point of this tutorial though is to try and get to this look without the need for presets. I know a lot of people don't want to invest in presets or they just don't feel the need to and that's okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I just like to make my screen as big as possible so I can see this photo as best possible. The first thing I'm going to do is always get the exposure right. I do that. My I'm not a huge fan of using the slider just because I feel a lot more in control using the keyboard. So if I hold down shift and press the up key, the up arrow on the keyboard, it'll move in increments of 3 up or down obviously. So it'll be 0 0.33, 0 0.66, 0 0.99. And then if you let go of shift and move it, it'll move in increments of 10. So I We'll lift this one by 3.3, three, probably bring it down a bit, leave it there. And then the next thing I do is the same thing with the temperature. Uh, the reason why I do exposure first and then the temperature is that if your exposure is down, you're not really going to see a huge effect of your temperature for your desired look that you're trying to get. So if I take that back to where about where, where I want it and then I will get my sort of white balance right. There's not a lot to need to change here. Again, holding down shift is going to bring it down by 200. Letting go of shift is going to move it by 50. So it was at 6,000. I'm probably going to go down there around that area. I'm quite happy with that. The tint is pretty spot on for this photo to me, really. Move it up just ever so slightly. If you press tab on your keyboard, it's going to jump down to the next setting in the sort of panel of, of editing tools here. On the contrast, I'm going to boost that up by 10. Highlights, I want to lift quite a bit just because I think that white wall behind her is looking a bit dull. And it's not affecting the skin too much by lifting it. So I'll leave it around there. Shadows, I think I'm going to lift just a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because I quite like this kind of shadow detail in the hair there. So I'm just going to lift it a tad, not too much. The whites are quite good where they are, to be honest. The blacks I'm going to bring down just a tad, probably just by about eight or so. If you have a look at the histogram here, as I lift it, you'll see the blacks moving away. I like to have that black as close to the edge as possible, just that they're, they're nice and solid. The clarity I'm going to bring down probably by about five. If you think of film looks, you often, you're not going to see a film look that's going to look much like that. I mean, there are particular films and lenses and cameras that can achieve that look, but it's not a look that I enjoy. And when you think of a film look, generally speaking, they're quite soft. So I bring the clarity down a bit. I'm going to lift the vibrance up by 10 and then bring the saturation down by 10. That just helps me maintain a little bit of color, but still give it that sort of filmic sort of muted look. The tone curve we'll come back to. HSL panel, there are, I mean there are things I could do here uh, sometimes if I wanted to just bring the skin tone, darken it down a bit, I'll change the luminance of the orange. A lot of Visco film presets will change quite a lot in here. 
for the sake of this tutorial and keeping it quite simple, I'm going to leave that out. Split toning, I'm going to add a 210 blue into the highlight. Now, if you hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard, you can slide this around and it'll preview the, the colors at 100% saturation. Just with my experience and my experimentation, I've found that 210 is a really nice blue to add to highlights majority of the time. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll quite like that at 15. Shadow, same thing, you can either hold Option or Alt and drag it around to get something. I quite like to add oranges or reds to the highlights when I'm looking for this particular look. I've found again with my experimentation that 40 is a good color to add into the shadows. You can see as I'm lifting it here, it really starts to show that kind of film look because a lot of films have that sort of chrome, uh, orange, red in the shadows. I'd normally probably leave this around 20, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to boost it up a bit so we can see the effect a lot clearer. The detail, by default, it's, lit, it's at 25. I'm going to actually drop that down to 10, just because, again, if you consider film looks, a lot of them are very soft. Like I said before, some lenses and films will give you a sharp look, but in this particular one, I prefer it to be soft. You don't... I mean, that just is not going to be the effect that you look for. So let's leave that at 10. The effects panel, adding grain, is a huge effect to getting a film look. I always like to, I almost always add about 20. This one I'll do, let's go to 30, 40, and 60 on the grain panel. If we zoom in here, you'll see the effect that that's adding. If we turn it on and off, you'll see it adds a massive difference really adding to that film look. Camera calibration for me is where the magic happens I guess you could say. Uh, if we look at the skin tone in particular on the red channel you can obviously see how much that's affecting the, the skin tones so I think this is pretty good to be honest. I'm going to bring down the saturation a bit. A lot of the times your camera can sort of change your, your skin tone a lot and that's where this sort of panel will be helpful just to try and return it to its natural state. The green, I'll almost always bring the saturation down by 50. This is going to give you that kind of muted look, really desaturated look without taking out too many of the other colors like the blue and the reds. It's just a particular style that I found works really well in trying to get this effect. The blues I'm going to bring down by about 10, I suppose. If you really want to go for an extreme look, you can alter this quite a lot. I'm not a huge fan of going overboard. I like to keep things pretty subtle. I'll probably bring the hue of the blue down by about 10. So if we look at the camera calibration changes that we've made before and after, that's really made a huge difference to our overall look. I'm going to go back to the tone curve now that we've done all the other changes. I'm going to lift the blacks a bit so it kind of crushes them, softens them quite a lot. And then I'm going to bring the whites down as well so that it's not like a pure white point. It's more of like a gray. Lifting the blacks has obviously got rid of quite a lot of our contrast. So we want to bring that back by bringing down the highlight, uh, the shadow, sorry, in this point here. And then doing the same but lifting the highlights. So I'm pretty stoked with how that looks. I'm going to add a bit of a crop, pressing R on the, key, on the keyboard to bring up the crop tool. And then if this is locked, it's going to keep your proportions, which is quite nice. If it's not locked, you can just hold down Shift and it'll keep your proportions. Just want to center that a bit, give it a bit of rotation. If we reset the photo, what we see there is straight out of camera and then that's after our edit. I think we've got pretty close to the look there. Let's bring this window back up and compare them with the Visco film edit. So that was edited with Visco. This was edited without a preset. And I mean, to be honest with you, I kind of prefer the edit that we've done here without the presets. Let's compare them side by side. Let's just take these windows out of the way. So side by side, the one on the left is what we edited now. This is with the Visco film preset. I mean, for me, that's pretty damn close, and I, I would be really happy with showing this to a client or putting it online.
Don't be surprised if at the end of editing your photo, you suddenly have a pair of glasses on. It's just kind of this natural transformation that starts happening when you start editing your photos to look all film and vintagey. So by making this video, I don't think badly of presets. In fact, I think presets are awesome. They can speed up your workflow, they can get you to a really good starting point and a really good foundation for your editing process where you can make adjustments from there that suit your style and suit the look that you're going for. So yay presets. This video just helps you out if you don't have presets or if you don't want to use presets or if you don't want to buy presets because I know that they can be pretty pricey some of the time. I hope you liked this tutorial. If it did help you out, please hit that like button. It helps a lot more than you think. And if you do use presets, comment below what's your favorite preset. Do you use Visco Film? Do you use a specific photographer's presets that they're selling? And subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. I'll be bringing one out every single week so you can be a better hipster. I mean photographer. Yeah. Be free, balloon! <laughs> oh, he's coming. Hey. Hey! <laughs> uh, Steph's busy getting my close up. Yeah. That was good timing. <laughs> <laughs>